So tell me, what is wrong with the, your current living situation? Just tell us about it, boy. Go I, ahead. I live with Dracula. <laughs> no! Welcome, everybody, to the Salty Nerd Podcast. We are talking about our favorite Las Vegas local actor, Nicolas Cage. That's right. He lives here in Vegas. Sooner or later, we will get him in the studio. We're going to talk about his uh, his life, his career, one of our favorite actors that we always love watching his movies. And then recently, he came out with a new movie called Renfield. He plays Dracula. And uh, we watched that, so we will be spoiling the crap out of that mm -hmm. as well uh, as part of our discussion. I'm joined, as always, by my fantastic panel of nerds. Matt Vader's here. So. Hi. Should I call you Matt Vader anymore? Or you're changing that up. I, I haven't decided yet. Okay. So yeah, Matt Vader's fine. He's All the right. Matt Vader of our hearts. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I want to. It's going to be a habit. I have to break. Stop yeah. calling you that. I know. Everybody will. It's okay. probably never happen. <laughs> you're always V to me, V. I know. Judah's also here. Hello. Welcome. Hi. I forgot my glasses today. I know you're naked. <laughs> How naked? <laughs> How <laughs> naked? Katie's is also here, producing the show. Yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to not only talking about Renfield, but also Nicolas Cage's very storied career. Mm. Uh, he is a delight to watch, no matter how bad the movie he is in uh, might be. But uh, we've been, because he's a Las Vegas local and we have a brand new studio, we have been trying to get Nicolas Cage to come on the podcast for years now. It's never going to happen. And, <laughs> and, and uh, I'm almost on a first name basis with his manager who I keep bugging <laughs> uh -huh. through email. It was like, hey, would Nicholas like to come on and talk about this movie? He's like, no. Would Nicholas like to come on and talk about this movie? No. Tell him we have a bunch of booze in the studio. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we got free booze. Yeah. And hats. <laughs> and hats. But uh, we, we love Nicholas Cage. And so we figured, you know what, with his new movie Renfield coming out, now would be a good time to kind of talk about his career, talk about the, the highs, the lows, mm -hmm. and where his career might be going. Because like I said before, no matter the quality of the movie he's in, mm -hmm. Nicolas Cage is always awesome. He's always Nicolas Cage. He's always awesome. Yeah. And uh, and we're going to talk about his comeback movies where he's been doing a lot of interesting stuff mm -hmm. uh, very lately well, with, with like his choices. Of that's a lot of movie. stuff to talk about in 45 yeah. minutes. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> first of all, I want to talk about a fun thing that happened when Kadish and I went to go see this movie. <laughs> oh, is this your theater experience? Yeah. Hey, guys. If you could do me a quick favor, if you like this episode and it tickles your fancy or any other episode that we've done in the past, uh, share it on social media and tag us in that post so that we know you're talking about us and we will immediately jump onto that app and we will respond to your tag and uh, we can talk about what you like about the episode and possibly talk about something that we might want to cover in the future. And we would love to bring you in in our community. We have a wonderful Discord app as well. There's a bunch of people in there that just love chatting with us. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. So if you like this podcast, tag us in that post and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you guys so much. Back to the podcast. So we went to, it was kind of a late show, 7.50 p.m. <laughs> Week. <laughs> we went to Week. 10 p.m. <laughs> so uh, we get in there, we get our popcorn, we get all situated. There's no one in the theater. And I was like, I was like, I'm upset like that more people aren't in this theater oh, to come yeah. see this movie. Like I was so excited to go see it. Like movie, I've been I've been looking forward to this movie for like since I heard that it was coming out. This like movie months. flopped. Did you know that? Yeah. It made like no money. Not in my heart. <laughs> anyway, so right before the movie starts, a couple of people come and they sit behind us. And yeah, then yeah. like right as the movie's starting, um, I hear and see this girl walking up to the back row. And she's got her phone out. And I thought that she was like on a FaceTime call. And like the movie's starting. And she's like, bah, 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 bah. he's drunk. That's why I don't blah, 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 blah. And I turn around and I go, hey, we're in a movie. <laughs> the lights are out. The lights are out. The movie, oh, the movie has yeah. begun. Yeah, that's it. I'm pissed. And, and it keeps happening. And we and now all of a sudden I hear another voice and it's like a dude. And I was like, is that the guy that she's talking to on the phone? Like who? I didn't realize there were more people in the back row. Apparently there were three people back there all together. Yes, there were three people. Okay. A guy and so, two girls. So I hear a guy's voice and he's like, shut the fuck up. It's all my fault. Just shut the fuck up. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. And Kadish stands up and he walks to the back of the theater. And I was like, what the fuck is he up to? <laughs> what will happen, Kadish? He, he's like, oh, yeah, you, you should tell. All right. Well, you know, this isn't my first rodeo when it comes to disruptive theater patrons. Oh, my goodness. So instantly I'm, I'm like, you know, we need to nip this in the bud. So I go up there. And uh, there's a guy with, with a girl sitting up there, and there's this other girl who's got, like, her phone out. And I walk up to them, and I'm like, hey, guys, look, you need to be quiet because we got a movie here. So, mm -hmm. like, either you guys shut up 
<laughs> or I'm going to go get the manager and I'm going to have them escort you out. <laughs> and um, the girl who's sitting next to the, the guy, she, it's like, this crazy woman <laughs> has come in here. She's recording us right now. And, and she's causing all this drama. I'm like, I don't care. If, if it's drama, take it outside. And, they got, and the other girl's like, this guy's drunk. He like accosted me in the lobby, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, again, I don't care. Either you shut up or I'm going to go get the manager. <laughs> and so as I'm walking away, they start talking very loudly again. And I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to go get the manager. And as he's walking out, the guy starts screaming, bro, bro, bro. <laughs> oh and, and so, like, I go get the manager and uh, the guy who takes the tickets, who's kind of like the, the guardian to, like, the theater, mm-hmm. you know, they check, make sure you have a ticket. Uh, I, I tell him what's... You go- shall pass. Yeah. I, t- I tell him what's going on and he, he he's like, he's like, oh, yeah, I know those guys. <laughs> it's like, I, I, I clocked them. And so, like, they have to go get two managers to, to go in there. And uh, so, like, I, I go back in the theater and it was, it was me, Jude, and there was, like, a handful of other people in there and they all started applauding when they saw, like, the people... <laughs> Uh, being escorted out, but before they escorted them out, they just like took them to the side on the st- on like this beside the chairs, well, and they were just like hashing out the problem. We're like the movie is still going, guys. <laughs> Finally, they escorted somebody out, but huh. I think they only escorted him out, and like the fucking crazy girl stayed for a while, and then like eventually, like about. I don't know, like 10, 15 minutes into the movie, I saw her like stumbling out, hitting the sides of everything on the way yeah, out. But I, the I basically missed the first 10 minutes of the movie. You did. Uh, that's a bummer. You did. Yeah. I don't think I really missed anything. You did. You, did. No. you really didn't. Uh, so I guess we should probably start with the early Nicolas Cage. The earliest Nicolas Cage movie I remember seeing is with you guys. We watched uh, Raising Arizona. Raising Arizona. That's the first movie that I've ever seen of Nicolas Cage when he's like young. Mm-hmm. And uh, not a movie for me. I watched it once, and I don't remember liking yeah. it very much, so I probably wouldn't watch it again. <gasps> but Nicolas Cage was on point as his normal, quirky, weird self. And mm-hmm. I think he immediately got like a reputation for being difficult on set. Well, I, I, I should point out that this isn't our first Nicolas Cage-centered episode. No. So like back when we were still doing audio only, mm-hmm. we did like a Nicolas Cage tribute episode yeah we, we watched raising arizona but we also watched another movie of his called jujitsu <laughs> and oh, uh, i forgot about and, that and yeah. is that <laughs> when we did willie's wonderland too um yeah. i believe so okay yeah. oh man that was willie's back in Wonder- the audio only days yeah willie's wonderland was awesome well, well, i love that what? movie I, I think willie's wonderland was actually like so this is our, our third nicholas cage episode we love the guy what did you say i think you guys like him more than i do but, 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 yeah. but it, it's kind of funny because you can divide did up- you touch it no <laughs> You're not even gonna touch it. It's Nicholas Cage. Wouldn't touch it. Suck it. <laughs> grab it. Nothing. Nope. That's a shame. Wait. In what scenario would you suck it without touching it? I don't know. I don't know how it works. <laughs> it's is, touch, then suck. The, stop. I mean, <laughs> I'm just. I want to know where. Weird you, universe I, do you live in? <laughs> it is the Moonshine Universe. <laughs> so uh, Nicholas Cage's career can be divided up into like his early character acting, where he's like very quirky uh, roles. Then he, he's in his Oscar, Oscar phase, and then he's in his Hollywood multi-millionaire like superstar phase, and then he's in his tax rehabilitation <laughs> phase, where he's basically doing all direct to Netflix movies, trying to do anything to pay his bills. He's a roller coaster. Yeah, and and now he he's in the comeback phase, where, yeah. he, where he's doing some like really interesting movies and getting a lot of attention for them. I um I, st- I still need to watch the uh, unbearable weight. Of massive, uh, yeah, yeah. I need to watch that too. I was actually going to watch it last last night, but let's have a movie night tonight. I didn't want to spend five ninety nine. <laughs> I keep trying to get you guys to come over, dude, dude. That movie, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, where Nicolas Cage basically plays himself. Yeah, yeah it is probably one of his best movies it's of all time. It's so genius. good. It's brilliant. It's great. It, it ba- basically like um, it it starts off as like a gag where Nicolas Cage is playing himself. And then throughout the course of the movie, it becomes a Nicolas Cage, Jerry Bruckheimer film yeah. from the 90s. Yeah. It's really fucking good. <laughs> I, love, I need to watch I it. I love he's like talking to like his, uh, his, his media manager or something. And he's like, I mean, I'm right, right? Like, I'm not being an asshole, right? Like, I'm not expecting too much. Like, I'm not being too much, right? And everybody's just yes manning him. Yeah, yeah. I, my memory of like, this is who Nicolas Cage is, comes from The Rock and Con Air. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, the Brock, and, Brock and, Hammer, and yeah. Face Off. Oh, those are, yeah, those that's the trifecta of Nicolas Cage. Face Off. off. 
Lord of War was really good. Lord of War is freaking oh, shit, incredible. That great. I, I think it's one of my favorite movies of his. That that, that, that's watched. another movie that yeah. we reviewed. Absolutely fantastic yeah. movie. That's I think I might have given it five stars. That was a freaking you, you, that's you an incredible did. movie. I love that movie. Uh, and then the other one that I think is is really underrated is The Family Man. Aww. I freaking Leitione? Yeah, I love that, that right? movie. Yeah, whatever her name is. Kay. Chick from Jurassic Park three. She probably hates that I recommend I that. <laughs> 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 Can you tell your wife to stop? That's a very bad idea. Yeah, that chick. Um, Family Man, growing up, that was one of those mo- those movies where I watched were like this. Tay Leone. Tay Leone. It's Tia? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Tay. Um, I just, I, I love the heart in that in that movie. The story that it had to tell and the way it told it, like family matters more than money. And this guy has like a choice of like, do I pursue money or do I pursue my family? And it's like some kind of a mythical time warpy type thing. But he eventually chooses his family yeah. and uh, he sets his life right. I I just, lo- it's kind of like a wonderful life. Basically. I yeah. love that in every I feel like in every role he is in, he's still kind of a weirdo mm-hmm. he's in everything. A like even in that movie, when he's like talk, he's talking about like his kids and he's like, I mean, I, I like my kids. I like them. They're they're neat. And, and his wife is like, cool. Maybe we'll keep them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> let's let's be real here for just for a second. Um, Nicholas Cage is weird in all his roles. Yeah. Because Nicholas Cage is a weird dude. He's weird in real life. Do you think so? Absolutely, one hundred percent guarantee. Which one of us isn't? In real life. <laughs> but no, no. Have you, have you, I mean, he lives here. He he is in the news cycle on a semi regular basis. For being fucking weird, <laughs> okay? Um, uh, Nicholas Cage spotted in a hotel lobby in tiger print pajamas for <laughs> reasons that, nobody that's really not knows even a about. Joke. Like that's a <laughs> legit <laughs> news story. No, for real. <laughs> this, and this shit happens. It's just. I like, wish I had the backbone to go sit in a lobby in my yeah, tiger print PJs. Yeah. Hey, Nick, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Just, bah, bah. Oh, fuck, that is a shit. perfect impression. <laughs> nice pajamas, uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> oh, what are you doing? What, what are you doing here? Um, Uber dropped me off. <laughs> I don't know. I told him to take me home, and here I am. <laughs> Cheers. You know, it's like fucking... I don't, who's that old drunk English dude <laughs> that you used to... That, you, uh, that was in you? all the... No, the drunk guy with... Uh, he was in all the all the British movies. He was in all kinds of movies Sean in the seventies. Sean Connery. No, 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 he's talking James about Bond. Dudley Moore. Dudley, Dudley Moore. Moore. He's Dudley Moore. He's he's American he's Dudley Amer- Moore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but here I am. You got any Asian chicks I can marry? <laughs> take me to the, take me to the casino. That's really cool. All right. <laughs> But, yeah. That's, that's, that's but, really good. It, it, it was, a, huh? This is what surprises me about him, though. Like he's a weirdo, right? Okay, you, yeah. s- you think he's weird in oh, person? He's absolutely weird. Sure, he has a very unique and weird way of acting, uh-huh. and sometimes it works. Sometimes it he doesn't. Just, he just channels it, it, his inner weirdness. It really depends on who's making the movie. Because you could put Nicolas Cage in anything. I just watch. You have to channel the power of Nicolas Cage into your project. You don't try to make Nicolas Cage like work. Work in your project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to channel his power. He's the power source. Yeah, I want. I wanted to check out one of his like crappier movies that he made when he was like what when he was on the down the downward turn. uh, Drive, drive angry. Like jujitsu. Jujitsu was real bad. It was bad. Do you remember? <laughs> have you ever seen Drive Angry? No. Drive Angry is a movie where he literally is fighting the devil in a 71 Chevelle or, or a Charger or something, some kind of American muscle car, and he's, like, going out and killing gang members because the devil's got his soul or something along those lines. It's a super weird movie. Horrible movie. Wow, it sounds great. Really, really bad production value, and it looks obviously like he doesn't give a shit. And uh, it's... Quite the thing well, to watch. We should point out, so like at a certain point in Nicolas Cage's career, back when he was pulling in twenty million dollars per movie and stuff like that. Yeah, he, he had bad people, ma- like yeah, so, telling so him so about money. Essentially, like his financial advisor stole from him, and he also was recklessly spending all of his money. Like he'd buy castles, he'd buy art, he'd buy. He bought a pyramid. He, yeah, he <laughs> he'd buy he visited all- it in in New Orleans. He bought a pyramid. Yeah. No, he, he bought a he bought a grave site. In uh, cemetery number one. Yeah, yeah it's oh. a pyramid. Yeah, in, in, oh. uh, yeah he's, he's gonna be buried. Yeah, not, above not, not a pyramid in Egypt. It was a it was a pyramid shaped um, tomb, above ground tomb in, yeah. in Louisiana. Oh, yeah. Um, but and I, and I think he bought it when they were filming Renfield. If I no 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 no. Because no, 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 no. Renfield's is, filmed in New Orleans too, right? 
No, I, I think yeah, it, 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 it looks like it was set it's set in New Orleans. It's set in New Orleans, look, but, I was, but it doesn't look like it's in New Orleans. I was just there. <laughs> I was just there. I mean, and, I mean we've and, been there too. And they so. filmed those. Yeah. They filmed several scenes, exact same places but, but I was the, sitting. The point so. I was trying to make is mm-hmm. basically. At the point where Nicolas Cage was on top of the world, he was spending money like it was going out of style. And on top of that, his financial advisor was stealing from him. He walked out of bed in the morning like this. And, and, and so <laughs> oh, yeah. he, he got in a situation where basically he owed a bunch of money in taxes mm-hmm. and he didn't have the money to pay it. And so he had to sell off a bunch of his assets mm-hmm. and then he had to start taking as many jobs as he could. And a lot of these projects that he started taking on were, were these like kind of substandard movies where, mm-hmm. where, oh, where they would go. Movies. Yeah, they, they were like direct to Netflix. They were like really, really bad. He was good in them, but like at the same time, like the movies were just crap. And he knew they were crap, but mm-hmm. he needed the paycheck. I, I just got the perfect movie pitch. <laughs> oh, <right>. okay. <laughs> Nicholas Cage, uh-huh. Wesley Snipes, okay. CIA tax collector. <laughs> With a gun. <laughs> Honestly, I'd go see it. Buddy cop movie? Buddy cop CIA okay, yeah, collector in. tax collector movies with Soul. Nicolas Cage. Bounty hunters. And, and and Wesley Snipes. That's brilliant. That's fucking awesome. That would sell millions of dollars worth of tickets. I'd yeah. go see that movie. Yeah. Yeah. So, fuck so, is always trying to skate up. So the, the whole the whole downturn of his career was basically directly attributable to money problems. And so there are tons of movies out there. With Nicolas Cage headlining them, they're really bad. Like Left Behind. Go check out um, Primal. Yeah, Primal. Primal's horrendously <gasps> oh, bad. Oh, that movie's so bad. <laughs> yeah, oh. he's stuck on the boat, and the jaguar gets loose out of its cage and starts murdering everybody, and he's the only one who oh, can hunt. A he's, a, he's a big game hunter. He's a big too. game hunter. Oh shit! I'm thinking of something else. What, what were you thinking of? Uh, fuck! I don't. I thought it was called Primal. It's like a like a family movie, but there's like a an evil sphere. It's a Nicolas Cage movie? Yeah. Oh. Let me, let me it's not a video game? Yeah, it is a video game. Oh, shit. I got to look it up now. Continue. Okay. Yeah, what were so, you going to say, Katie? Well, I was just saying, like, in addition to all these bad movies he was making, he was also doing voice work. So he finally got to play Superman in um, the Teen Titans oh, God. Uh, movie. Uh, uh, and he was also a voice of Spider Noir in, in Into the Spider-Verse. That, 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 that was cool. That was, that was cool. Um, but, you know, famously, like, he was going to play Superman in Superman yeah. Lives, yeah. You know, which, which was, like, the big... You know, kind of like movie that never was. I'm, I'm assuming we've all seen the videos, oh, the behind the scenes costume atrocious. fittings. Atrocious. That looks so bad. The, the, it's the, like the, Nick Cage with like shoulder length hair, kind of scraggly. It looks looking. like a Saturday Night but Live skit. Yeah. Nick Nicholas Cage is one of the biggest Superman fans ever, though. Like, like mm-hmm. he had spent money on like one of he the original named his action son comics. Kyle. Yeah, yeah. He named wow. his first son Kal El. Uh, you know, so like. It, okay. It, it, weirdo. <laughs> it's, it's always been a dream of his to play Superman. And uh-huh. when Tim Burton was going to make Superman Lives, Nicolas Cage was going to be Superman in that. Um, Kal- but uh, however, it but, ended yeah, up they're, not going through. The costume fittings videos it's are like, all over the it's, internet. It's, it's like that dipshit who named his kids Anakin and fucking Amidala. <laughs> what was his name? Fucking. I don't Ryan know, something. something. Yeah. I don't remember. Who does that? This is my son, Cal L. Weirdos. And his sister, Peter Parker. <laughs> <laughs> what? Peter Parker Cage. <laughs> but but let, let, let's talk a little bit about the Bruckheimer era. Because like as soon as he won the Oscar for leaving Las Vegas, um, his career went from like a quirky character actor to basically leading man overnight. Mm-hmm. And he made the correct pivot, I think, to basically be an action star. And his big breakout in the Bruckheimer era was Con Air. Con Air. Yeah. Oh, I love Con Air. I love it too, but I, I don't know if I can say it's a good movie or not. <gasps> is it a good movie or is no, it just fun? It's an awesome movie. <laughs> that southern accent, though. Oh, my God. When he walks <laughs> off his, of that plane and he fucking his, flicks his mullet. His thin-ass <gasps> mullet. Fuck me right now. You know, you know what I see now? I, I see Aaron Rodgers. When I, when I think of that movie, because Aaron Rodgers, the football player, yeah, yeah, he made himself look like Nick Cage last year. Did he really? Yeah. So now I just see Aaron Rodgers when I think of that movie <laughs> with the white tank top, wife beater, yeah, and yeah. Long hair. yeah. It's just it's too much. That was on a that it's was pretty funny. That's a weird movie. They crash lands in Las Vegas, by the way. That was the end yeah. of the movies. They crash land in Las Vegas. I, I, I might be wrong, but wasn't he in that that one with Elvis's with with uh, three three thousand miles to Graceland? Yeah. Was he was, was he Nick in Cage that? in that movie? No, that he was wasn't? that was Kurt Russell and uh, oh, okay. And well, that Kevin would have Costner. been a better movie with Kurt, with Nicholas Cage. Color out of space. What movie is that? That's the one with the sphere. It's the evil sphere meteor meteorite that did, like fucks up a farm family. He's been in so many movies. Did, yeah. Don't even know it's about from 2019. So he, did he make that with old Bruce Willis? 
Is that what he did? Maybe. No. Maybe. <laughs> but it's it's just funny to see like we all understand you're here to make money. Yeah. So if an actor's like, hey, I'm I'm in some dire straits. I need some cash. Uh, I'm gonna go do a couple of cheap projects. Do, uh-huh. do you understand how big Nicolas Cage was in the nineties? Oh, like, like in his Bruckheimer era, mm-hmm. he was pulling in twenty million bucks a picture. Mm-hmm. He well, was, he comes he was, from Legacy, also. He, yeah, he's a Coppola. Um, he he's makes huge. He, he was making mm-hmm. some of the biggest movies on the planet. Yeah. He was the biggest action star on the planet, and uh, he he was literally took his face. Off. Off. Yeah, yeah. Working with John Woo <laughs> and, and John Travolta. Like, the guy was literally on the top of the Hollywood pyramid. Mm-hmm. Kick Ass is a great movie. He's, he plays. What does he play? I love Kick Ass and I love him in it. Big he's, Daddy, right? Yeah, he's yeah. Big Daddy. Yeah. He basically is Batman. I think yeah. that was a lot of fun, yeah. though. I think Nicolas Cage is just a great actor. And man. then the National. Really but here's the thing, though, is like, we've talked about this before. He's the same person in every movie, kind of, yeah. more or no, less. No, 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 no. He's he just has... the same level of weird yeah. in each movie. He plays weird, quirky characters. Yeah. Yeah. Even Ghost Rider is kind of weird. Oh, shit. Like, Ghost Rider's yeah, bad. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's what like, about what Knowing? My... That one with uh, Jessica Biel or something? What was her I name? I never watched that one. That was a bit of a weird movie. That, that, yeah. that was an Alex Proyas film, the guy who directed the I kind of want to rewatch Ghost Rider to see if it's still bad in my perspective. Probably uh, still so bad. the first Ghost Rider is bad. The second one is really bad. <laughs> because it's, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was directed by Neveline Taylor, the same guys who did Gamer and uh, Crank. Oh, Shit, those are bad too. <laughs> well, Crank was fun. Gamer was cool. I could see that. No, those are both bad. Well, bad good. Mm, just bad. <laughs> is it though? It's like bad good, but without the good. But not, okay, the other one too it's is like a, we're, we're getting criticized for saying that he's the same character in every movie, and I don't think that's. I don't think he's the same character in every movie. I should probably he explain, has, but he has a he has, he has the Nicholas Cage manner. Yeah, he has a weirdness and a quirkiness that he brings to most of his yeah. characters that you can attribute directly to Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, you know, so it's like it's like the it's, characters. It's, it's, it's not like it's not like like in the chat. It's not, he's not the Rock. He's not Ryan Reynolds. He's not like playing the exact same fucking. But dude he was in the Rock in in every <laughs> single. Yeah, yeah, but, but here, here's the thing. So, like, but, you put up something like Lord of War mm-hmm. against something like right. National Treasure. Yeah, and Nicolas Cage, he does, he is kind of quirky in every role that he plays, but he's able to make characters stand on their own. So, like, he can mm-hmm. disappear into a character. He's a good yeah. actor. Right. Um, so, like, he doesn't play Nicolas Cage in every movie, but you're right. Like, there are Cage isms that work yeah, their way yeah. into his sure. character. Every character, in, in every character every that role, he plays, every role he plays, there's, there's the the similar mannerisms that Nicolas Cage brings to those. You roles. could you could put him in a fat suit and make him completely unrecognizable, I mean, and you could immediately go, "Oh, that's Nicolas Cage." That's Nicolas Cage. Yeah. yeah. He's he's the type of guy that I will watch do anything, but he doesn't. I don't feel like it's personally like, he disappears into the roles. It'd be like you know Christopher Walken, you know. Christopher Walken. You, you know, that's the, like, yeah, you know, who, you, you know, know what you're getting. You know if it's Christopher Walken is playing a role or not. Yeah. It's the same same kind of deal, yeah. right? And not the same character. They're different no. characters, but they have the same Christopher Walken-esque yeah. mannerisms. It's yeah. very or, similar or, to or Luke, or, 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 I don't know, uh, who's the Texas dude? Or Rad, or Matthew Rad, McConaughey. Rad. Yeah, same kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. You know? Texas dude. Texas dude. He should run for governor, but... I neither here nor there. <laughs> uh, before we we talk about Renfield, I wanted to uh, just mention one of my favorite Nicolas Cage movies that's recently made was Willy's Wonderland. Oh yeah, crazy! That I, movie is fantastic. He doesn't have a single line of dialogue in the movie, but he owns it. It's so fun to watch. Yes. Yeah. it's so cool. You can check out our review of that, guys. If yeah. you haven't seen it yet, yeah, we'll probably link it underneath the video. Probably, but yeah, I I love Willy's Wonderland. That was a lot of fun. I've I've really wanted to see his art house movie that he made. Was I think it was called Mandy. I, all I see is a okay. picture of him covered in blood. The only reason <laughs> I haven't watched it is because I know it's really long, and you know I hate movies yeah. that are over two hours. I think it's over three hours. It's also from the same guy who did Color Out of Space, I, th- I believe. I'm in. I, I mean, I'll watch it I'm with in. you, dude. So all right. You want to come over tonight? <laughs> Not tonight, but yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I do want to say, like, we all reviewed Willie's Wonderland, and it was one of the most original and fun and interesting Nicolas Cage movies we ever saw, because legit, he has no dialogue. Mm-hmm. Like, he actually, like, removed all the dialogue for his character in, in the film. And so it's it's basically a silent performance. Yeah. And it, it's essentially Five Nights at Freddy's, but, yeah. like, with Nicolas mm-hmm. Cage. Mm-hmm. And it is... Awesome, for yeah. lack of a better, like, like we, we, so we just had fun. so much fun with that movie. Um, but there's another movie that came out around the same time, uh, which is kind of art housey. It's called Prisoners of Ghostland, and Jude and I watched it with Conspiracy Tom, mm-hmm. and that movie was 
bad. It's it was bonkers. really bad. Oh, it had all the bones of something that could have been really weird and good, and it just wasn't. It, it, it's basically like Escape from New York, but Nicolas Cage at a certain point in the movie gets like his his. Um, testicles blown off. <laughs> what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it just takes a dark turn. It's like really weird. Jeez. That's interesting. But but super art housey. And and this is the Yeah, I'm not in art house movies. This is the type of thing where like after his his downturn with like the straight to Netflix and doing movies just to pay his tax bill, like he's been taking some like really like interesting roles lately where mm-hmm. you know not just Willy's Wonderland, but he also had Pig which was like a big thing. It was like an Oscar I thing. loved Pig. Yeah, Pig, I Pig, Pig was really good, um, but The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent as mm-hmm. well. So between those two movies, like Hollywood all of a sudden like took notice and they're like, oh, wow, Nicolas Cage. Oh, he can actually awesome. act? Oh, yeah. he's back. He's back. Yeah, I, uh, I, uh, I can't comment on those movies because I haven't seen them yet. Yeah, I, seen I want to see but both of them. I I like, like, like if you really want to see Nicolas Cage act his ass off, you watch mm-hmm. Pig. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it was not the movie I was expecting it to be. Yeah. Because it almost looked like a John Wick film where like this guy <laughs> loses his, his prized truffle pig and he goes on a search <laughs> for it. But it's nothing like John Wick. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. Yeah, the trailer. You guys said the, it wasn't a revenge tale. Yeah, I was kind of disappointed, and I didn't really well, care. Well, there, there was actually something deeper to it because, like, it, <laughs> it was it, it was kind of a tragic movie, but at the same time, it, it was a fascinating character study, and it it had like this weird kernel of optimism at its core, which was like really nice and surprising. Have any like, of you when guys? When he says words like that, I just check out immediately. He's <laughs> an art house. Art house film. Yeah. Looking at his inner have any, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm, uh. Have any of you guys <laughs> seen uh, uh, Kill Chain? No. Kill Chain's no. a Nicolas Cage movie where he essentially is kind of like a John Wick-esque character. Where it's he another does, Netflix film. Right? It's another, ne- yeah, it's a straight, for, straight to video film. Is it Netflix is good for paying your tax bill? Apparently, <laughs> what's, yeah. What's going on you know, hey, I'll pick up two million dollars here. I'll go <laughs> over here, do another two million dollar picture. I'll take a, I'll take a hit on this one. Do a hundred. Yeah, yeah, it was basically like a spinoff of the Nick of the uh, Bruce Willis geezer teaser type <laughs> movies, where he shows up for one day, gets paid a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. And headlines the movie. Yeah, um, Kill Chain. He, you could kind of tell he showed up for like maybe two, three days of shooting, and then yeah. the rest of the movie was like shot elsewhere, and you could tell for sure. But it was, it was another one of those like. Interesting Nicolas Cage roles. Uh, you guys ready to talk about Renfield? Yeah, we can yeah. talk about that. I've seen it. Okay. Um, I didn't like it. No, I didn't either. I didn't like this movie at all. I um, I like Nicolas Cage's Dracula. I did like... Yeah. But here's the problem with casting Nicolas was, Cage as Dracula <laughs> in your movie is every time he's not on screen... You want him on screen. I want him on screen. Yeah, so but, uh, the movie would have like... Here's Nick Cage on as Dracula, and I'm like, yes, please give me more. And they're like, oh, here's plot B about the Asian yeah. lady and her daddy problems. And I'm like, I don't give a shit about it. Yeah, it was it was back? it wasn't a Nick Cage movie. <laughs> no, it was, it was uh, a it fucking was Aquafina, Aquafina movie. movie. Yeah, she's like the main character of the movie. It's like, and who it, the fuck cares about this dumb bitch? It's like, <laughs> okay, it's like no. I have so many questions about Aquafina. <laughs> please, <laughs> mostly <laughs> they are. I don't um, okay it's more of a state, statement. I don't get it. <laughs> um I feel like every time everything I've seen her in she's been like doing an impression of like a crotchety old white dude. Uh-huh. Like yeah. I, I I feel like she's just like doing her impression of like Mr. Miyagi. One part of the odd couple mm. like Mer, you made a mess. Mer. Yeah. And I don't get it. I I literally yeah. don't get it. I don't that that scene in the movie where um she has that little spat with her sister. And then she walks away. Her sister makes a statement. I can't remember what it was. Because it, obviously, it's, it's like plot B in this movie. Mm-hmm. And I didn't give a shit yeah. about anything that she had to say or her character. She was a vehicle for um, Nicholas Holt. Is that his name? I love him. Yeah. She's she's a vehicle for Nicholas Holt to kind of like progress through her story. But she, they focus so much on her and her backstory with her sister and her dad and the police force and all this stuff. And I'm like... None of it was necessary. I didn't sign up for any of no. this. Mm-hmm. I signed up for Nick Cage's Dracula and like and a weird what we do in the shadows thing with his familiar. Yeah. That's what I wanted. But what I got was so, like this tr- this try hard, heartfelt, like, oh, I lost my dad. Message bullshit. And I'm going to stand up for what's right. I'm like, this is not what I signed yeah. up for. Here's, there's, there's, there's certain things that, that I and we noticed last night when we were watching this thing. Oh, yeah. Um, first off, um, every single dude. In this movie beta is bitch. a beta pink sweater wearing cuck. Yep. Every, Every single fucking one. one of them. Except They're, for Dracula. Except for Dracula. He's the only okay. alpha in the, in the um, room. <laughs> Every woman in this movie is 
ugly as hell. A bit fugly. Every fucking one of them are ugly the, as fuck. I was like, I don't understand. It's, like, Aqu- it's a movie about ugly people and cucks. Aquafina's it's, it's the friends thing. that she goes and hangs out with once in a while. I legit. I was sitting there watching. Aqu- and I'm like, they look like they would fit into like the ugly stepsister category yeah. in a Disney movie. Yeah, it was wild. It was I'm so like, weird. What? It was the weirdest, weirdest characters in casting I've ever seen in my life for a movie. It's very. Um, it's so strange. I don't, I don't want to say it was pandering, but it felt very no, much like I, they it, were it like. It just felt strange. It's like Aquafina. You, can, you, I've seen her in movies where she's pretty funny, of, kind of attractive, kind of funny. She she reminds me of an old man version of Jackie Chan <laughs> in this movie. It's 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 weird. I don't. I always I don't feel get like it. she's doing on. a Robert De Niro impression. Something. Yeah, yeah. It's like she was. She literally sat there and mm, curmudgeon and the looked whole like time. this the whole time in the movie. And then. Like Nicholas Holt, we all like Nicholas Holt right here, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I love him. He's, yeah, he's I fine. feel like he's excellent in good everything. Actor. He's good as Renfield, but they they took this whole his whole character's like, oh, I'm a I'm a co what is it codependent, codependent. Yeah. I'm a codependent person with Dracula, and that's kind of the ha ha in mm-hmm. the trailer and kind of his character's ha ha. Yeah. But they took that one little thing, and they just stretched out for I the whole movie. I couldn't t- I couldn't figure out to what the- kind of movie we were watching. It's a romantic, gory comedy. So it, 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 it's kind of in the vein of Evil Dead 2 and the campy horror section. So, like, the violence and gore in this movie are way over the top. Yeah. And it's Cart- and very and cartoonish. It didn't fit. It didn't and, fit and, with the rest of the movie. And then. Nicolas Cage's performance as Dracula, like, when they introduce um, kind of the backstory, it goes to, like, the old 1950s style Boris Karloff, yeah. Yeah. like, universal horror <laughs> style movie. Oh, those flashbacks are great. Yeah, they yeah, were. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Um, and the guy who directed this, Chris McKay, so like previously uh, he had directed the Batman Lego movie, um, but his his last live action one was The Tomorrow War with Chris Pratt. Oh, cool. Um, and uh, we reviewed that. That and, movie was also not and, great. Yeah, it, it, was, <laughs> it, was, it was pretty bad. Um, so uh, going into this one, like the tone was all over the place. It's yeah. like, is this a comedy? Is this like... A serious drama, and I felt like they were trying to like push for it to be like there was like this romantic connection between Renfield and a uh, police officer Aquafina, <laughs> and and I was just like I'm not really getting that. I yeah, feel yeah, like the writing yeah. is like trying to push for it, but it, well, the chemistry is like, not there's there. There's moments. There's legitimately moment like Nicolas Cage as Dracula. Uh-huh. That's he what I want. It was awesome. Yeah, but he was good. It was like yes, please, because mm-hmm. it's comedic, but it's also scary. Like there's scenes, He's so good. There's scenes where they got really creative with like the strobe lighting in the background. Even and, his like <laughs> Transylvania his, yeah. accent. I was like on board. And it, his, I'm on board. All, all, his whole all mentality. The blood bags. The blood bags. Yeah, like, great. It was amazing. His throne of blood bags. Yes. yes. Bitch, Everything yes. to do with Dracula as or Nicolas Cage as Dracula was awesome in yeah. this movie. Mm-hmm. What was the problem was the, all the other bullshit. 75% of the other bullshit that I didn't ask it's for. Like we didn't need the mobster mom and her stupid goons. I liked her goons. I, did, I didn't care about Oh my Christina god, Ben and her Schwartz sister. was hilarious yeah. though. I like and, Ben. And, and I like Ben. I, I, I just didn't care about but, any of those other stories. But I do agree. They there's, were like completely separate entities there's that three they different, merged together yeah, in one yeah. movie. No, there's three plots in this movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I only care about the one yeah. that has to do with Dracula. Yeah. The other two with like her sister and her dead dad and the Think police department being corrupt. And and the 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 crime people who were like trying to sell cocaine and mm-hmm. it's just like, I, eh. but that took up the majority of the movie. Yeah, and that's what irritated it's like me. Like we about would it. we would be on these weird tangents with with uh, I'm angry at the police station with yeah. Aquafina. Oh, and and then we'd go to um, the crime family who nobody gives a shit about. And then we'd go have five minutes of cool Dracula shit. And then we'd go back to this other stuff for 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And then five minutes. There's cool. literally moments like, in this movie we were sitting next to each other in the theater going, shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> shut up. We shut don't need up. this. Go back to Dracula. And then yeah. they would cut back to Dracula and we're like, yes, <laughs> give me more of this. Yeah, there was a great running gag in the movie where there's this police officer named Kyle. And every time he'd start talking, everyone's just like, shut, shut the, the fuck, fuck up, Kyle. Kyle. <laughs> they were yeah. trying to do a, a Coen Brothers Donnie thing. Shut up, Donnie. Yeah. And it just didn't work. Shut up, Uncle Tony. Yeah, yeah. It just didn't. It was just, and so many of the, there was just so many weird plot contrivances. And, oh, and the, and the yeah, dialogue yeah. was you, terrible. You're using like, the term plot contrivances. Listen, listen. They're there. But they're, <laughs> they terrible. were so glaring, dude. Mr. Oh, film professor over here all of a when, sudden. When, when I can see them, bro. <laughs> they're pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Okay, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, um, I mean, like the chick, she goes to war essentially with her own department in the police station. Yeah. And like, 
I'm going to stand up for what's right. And the, and the assumption is that the entire police department is corrupted by this crime family who's paid everybody off. And that's what she's fighting against because yeah. those are the same people who killed her father. Again, b- plot Z that I didn't give a shit about. <laughs> she fights the entire police department, shoots a bunch of SWAT members, uh-huh. Uh-huh. goes to war with these people, and then in the next scene, she goes back to the police department yeah. to grab some more stuff, some more ammo, and like a shotgun. Because Aquafina is super cop. And, and she's got like a frick... She, they were trying to like a hot fuzz type thing going yeah. on here. And she goes and grabs a squad car, and then the next scene, they're driving together, fully rearmed with a squad car. I'm like, who let you into the police station <laughs> that you just shot a bunch of people from? Mm-hmm. Like there's well, anybody can go in there. It's New Orleans. Moments that were just like this doesn't add up. Like the editing was off. Like they forgot a story it's, element yeah, and they just, just moved on to the next thing. And they're like, whatever. Nobody's gonna notice. So basically, this movie is terrible. It's bad movie for except the, for Dracula. The, the, <laughs> the twelve minutes that Nicolas Cage is in. It. I yes. disagree. I think that this is a great movie except oh. for all of the stuff with Aquafina. <laughs> That's ninety percent of the movie. No, no, no. The rest is great. <laughs> all twelve minutes of it. I, 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 thought, I, will, I will say the action scenes in taken in isolation were like a oh, lot of fun. Yeah, oh, for yeah. sure. I had a blast when they but were. But you like, like a lot of weird body fluid shit. So yeah, and there was a lot of that. <laughs> it was weird. It. I know it's weird. I right? like the fight scenes. I thought they were really. Yeah, well they were done. pretty cool. A lot of arms being ripped off. Yeah, yeah, people yeah. Getting yeah. Cut in half. But, they jumped the shark, but, it, but, but it, they, they meant fit, to. It didn't fit with the rest of the movie. It really it didn't. Really Listen, strange. the shark jumped too. <laughs> yeah. It was very strange. One of the weirdest movies I've seen in a while. Was, I'm so surprised you guys didn't like it. I no. thought it was so quirky and cheesy and corny, and it was everything that I love in a movie. Nicholas, I just don't understand I I don't mind any of those Aquafina. things, but the rest of the movie was not when up to specs with it. Yeah, it when I walk, they, they didn't when mix I, well. Walking into this film, I wanted to see Nicholas Holt and Nicholas Cage play off each other yeah. as essentially Guillermo from What We Do in the Shadows yes. and his vampire overlords. Yes, 100%. I wanted to see a movie I about want them. A sequel. It's all the, like in the universe of Dracula. <laughs> yeah. But I want I want Nicholas Cage to keep coming back. Yeah, yeah, I want more yeah. Nicholas Cage as Dracula. I think yeah. he did. I thought he did. Oh, great. you he, thought he, I was done? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> N- Nicholas Cage nailed this performance. Oh, he did. Like, like, yeah. like he was able to be both like funny and entertaining, but at the same time, like he, he had scary. this edge to he him was, where, where yeah. he could be like scary and menacing. He was yeah. scary and he was funny and he was fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, he, you, he, you, he stole every scene he was in. It's like there was 100%. that one scene where you just you you told me in the theaters like he is. Gaslighting the fuck oh, out yeah. of Renfield right now. We're in, the, we're in his pastel colored apartment. His, his, yeah. And, and, and he is just going, oh, dude. His self help so, uh, apartment. Yeah, like, right. He's like, you're the monster. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Dude, because uh, the whole point of this movie, essentially, what the message it's, is, yeah. is, not, is to get out of toxic relationships and get away from people who are using yeah, you. That's it. And that's the message that's of the it. movie. When it came down to that message, that scene where, like, He's finally broken free of Dracula. He's kind of starting his own life, but he's still attached a little bit. And Dracula shows up in his apartment. And I'm watching this scene, and Dracula's like like twisting everything that he's done to make mm-hmm. him the bad guy. I li- I'm like, dude, he's gaslighting the shit out of yeah. him right now. Uh-huh. And it's kind of working. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was the scary part. I was watching this. I was like, you know, he's kind of right. I'm like, oh my God, he's gaslighting me. Well, he's ah! a yeah. monster. Yeah. And it was just, that was, <clears throat> that was the best moment in this movie when you saw. The whole message right. of the movie was like right there, a, right there in front of you. Oh, that's what they're trying to tell us. Yeah. yeah, get out of these these get out of these terrible relationships. Get away with people who treat you badly. Okay, that's great. That, and I that's love the that we're part. going back to the core lore of Dracula because, like, the original Dracula um, novel, like he's a monster. Mm-hmm, he's yeah. not romantic. Like the Bram Stoker's Dracula, where he's like, you know, oh, I love you, Mina. She's like, take me away from yeah, all yeah. this. Yeah, oh, there's da, a lot da, da, da. of yeah. It, that's not. The original. No. Yeah. He's a monster, and he's monstrous. And I love that we're going back to the uh, origin of Dracula. Also, just, also um, so Vader kind of made fun of, of the guy who leads, like, the codependency anonymous group. Oh, God. Uh, it's, it's, oh, it's, Isaac? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. So, so basically, there, Ghost? So basically there's this actor named Brandon Scott Jones, who uh, Jude and I w- love in this show called Ghost. Yeah. But he was also the, the gay best friend in uh, that Rebel Wilson mov- uh, movie where... Uh, she get she goes into the coma and, oh, and she's yeah, in yeah, like yeah. a. Oh, uh, she goes back to high school. Yeah. No, no, no. It, it, it's she wakes up in a uh, in a rom com basically. Oh, oh, that one with yeah. uh, Liam Hemsworth. <laughs> that cute. Yeah, so yeah, is this guy the new actor that's going to be playing that role in all these movies? Like, uh, what was 
what was that one guy who used to talk like <laughs> this? Harvey White. Uh, Firestone. Yeah. yeah. He's, yeah. he's going to be the next Harvey Firestone. Oh, my God. I got to call my oh, lawyer. I'm so, I'm so gay <laughs> with my stupid voice and the he way died, I hold he? my hands. No, and I don't think so. Is, no, he's is, still alive? I don't know. Is he going to take up that role in movies going forward? I don't know, but like, I really like this actor. <laughs> um, like like I said, Jude and I have watched him in this TV show called Ghosts. Yeah. Where he plays like this, uh, the ghost of a deceased uh, uh, so, um, like a re- re- revolutionary war uh, general, <laughs> and 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 he is hilarious in, in that show. Uh, I don't know, like uh, when when I noticed that he was the head of the uh, Codependence Anonymous, I was yeah. just like, oh, I like that guy. And why, and why is everybody who runs a twelve step program that guy? <laughs> because those are the type of people who have empathy. We are not the type of people to have empathy. No, like, nobody's gonna go to a group that you guys are yeah, hosting. Like, Shut your, up! What's your problem? Quit being a pussy. Don't be a bitch. <laughs> Did you guys bring donuts? You didn't bring donuts. Bring your, Rock. Bring bring your own coffee. Bring some guacamole with those chips. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Get out of here. Yeah. Deal with your problems. Uh, here's what I think Don't is going a, on in your home. I think you're being a little yeah. bitch. Yeah, we, <laughs> quit being a bitch. We, we, I think yeah. your husband's a bitch, too. We why don't you not, bring your husband a group and I'll the, tell him he's a bitch? The reason why people like us don't run groups like that is because nobody would show up. You have to have an empathetic beta male yeah. who's like, tell me about your uh, problems. Look, look at my pink sweater. I'm so good at this. The only time. Tell me all about your feelings. <laughs> but it was, oh, it was, that makes you a style beta. <laughs> it was funny how like so Renfield basically goes to these uh, codependency self help groups. He yeah. needs help. And and he so, so so he's searching for victims for Dracula. And so he decides I'm going to try and do something good by taking these abusive people in these toxic relationships um, as victims for Dracula. Yeah. And so like I'm going to be helping these people who who can't get away from them. And Dracula's like, this blood sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when we like, feed the bad just... guys to Dracula, Dracula's like, this is not up to my standards. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, want a, I, like, I want a bus of I cheerleaders. I want the innocent. Yeah. Well, he, he yeah. could taste like they were druggies. Yeah, they he's were like, like Ugh, what are you Ugh. feeding me? Like, he's sitting there, he's like, that one doesn't even have a head. And he's like, oh, shit. No, he did have a head a minute ago. <laughs> was, was, that like a, was that like a, a true blood thing? Maybe, Where, like, I don't know. Junkies' well, blood no. was gross, and, I, or something. I think it or? just has to do with, like uh, in the original lore, like the blood of the innocent, the virgin is the prime oh, blood yeah. that you get. You would so, like to eat a sandwich that no one has fucked. fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so and the farther away you get from that, the the less desirable the blood is. So when yeah. he's going out there getting just pieces of shit off the street, who like. Rob people and do drugs. Yeah, yeah. They're not going to be well prime. That's like not prime up, meat. <laughs> picked up a sandwich off the floor. Yeah. <laughs> we have a. We have one question. I want to round the table oh. out with. Okay, we'll yes. finish from, it off. from our chat from okay. our friends. Um, better vampire movie, Renfield or Day Shift? The Honestly, Jamie Fox Day oh, Shift is great. Day I Shift is better. I, day Shift On, is okay, way better. so. I was very excited to see this movie. Mm-hmm. I was, I've been looking forward to it right. for months. And I think the majority of that excitement was because Nicolas Cage was playing Dracula. Mm-hmm. If Nicolas Cage had not been in this movie, oh, the I would have been like, meh. Hard, hard pass, but yeah. because Nicolas Cage played Dracula, I'm like, oh, this movie's great. Yeah. I loved it. There are parts of it that I was like, meh, not, not great or for me. Uh, honestly, everything with Aquafina, I was like, <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. Um, but... Because Nicolas Cage is in this movie, I'm like, this movie is sure. fantastic. Yeah. I loved it. I had so much fun. I would watch it again. I wish I had gone with you guys last night and watched it again without the fucking drunk hooligans in the back of the theater. <laughs> um, but as a just if you I'm, if I'm going to stream either of these movies, Day Shift was Day Shift was, yeah, was we, should, we should point out that we do have a video where we review Day Shift. Yeah, yeah. we do. And uh, the Bazarian brothers were definitely yeah. deserving of their Those own spin-off. Both spin-off. movies are really fun. Spin-off. I think they're both pretty gory. Yeah. I think they're both pretty campy. I yeah. think Day Shift has a better story. It's got Snoop Dogg in it. It's Snoop, yeah. As a vampire killer. So I think as a cowboy vampire, cowboy vampire, vampire Snoop killer. Snoop Dogg so, playing so, a cowboy? I'm sorry. Yeah. So Day Shift. Day Superior. shift is better. Yeah. yeah. What, what's your score? Uh, for Renfield, without Nicolas Cage, it's a one star movie. Absolutely. With Nicolas Cage, he bumps it up a star and a half. So I'm going to say two and a half. Wow, you're being generous. Dude, Dracula, mm-hmm. Nicolas Cage Dracula is, was the only reason why I watched this movie. Yeah. And it's the only reason why I would ever consider watching it. Uh, Re- region? I can't mm-hmm. talk. I'm freaking drunk. Yeah, in the, in the <laughs> region of reasoning. Region. Yeah, Nicolas Cage elevated this don't, movie. don't be a bitch and then we'll call you a bitch. Uh, one, one and a half stars for Nicolas Cage's Dracula. What about you? Um, I'm right there with you. Without Nicolas Cage, 
this is a, a one Aquafina butthole movie. <laughs> okay, this movie sucks. It's terrible. It's, I mean, ugh. I, I just I would I if if Nicolas Cage wasn't in this movie, I would have left halfway through it. Yeah, and I would have demanded my money back. Yeah. I would have demanded it. I wouldn't. Have, I'd still be sitting there. Beta Give me my bullshit. goddamn twelve dollars back <laughs> right now, uh, with Nicolas Cage, um, because he did. It, he he poured himself into Dracula. Mm -hmm. He was Nicolas Cage Dracula. Was, oh, you know, uh, was, uh, <laughs> Dude, his martini but, with the eyeballs. Yeah, in it was it? great. That was so amazing. Eyeballs with Nicolas Cage. But I'll give him a star. Okay, all right. I'm gonna so go two two stars. Okay. Generous. Two stars. Do you so. give more stars for boobs or Nicolas Cage? No, there's no Nicolas boobs. Cage. Apparently, it's I'm half just, star I'm for curious. boobs. Yeah, I mean, he's half, half star, star for boobs. Nicolas Cage, one star, star for, for Nicolas Cage. Cage. Okay. Nicolas Cage elevated this movie a full star by yeah. his performance as Dracula. Without it, this is a piece of shit. Okay, <laughs> it's a terrible walk totally. out of the theater movie totally without agree. Nicolas Cage in it. Totally so. agree. Jude, how about you? Okay, uh, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I get it. I respect your opinion. Yeah, fine. Uh, I feel completely opposite. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna go with uh, without Aquafina. This is a five Aquafina butthole movie. Blech. Wait, no. <laughs> I don't understand. He gave it a one Aquafina butthole. I'm giving it five if she wasn't in the movie. So how much? How many buttholes do you take away because she was in it? Oh, okay. So because she's in it, I'm gonna give it three and a half. Three and a half <laughs> Aquafina buttholes. <laughs> you guys are way generous. Okay. I loved okay. it. I had a great right. time. Oh, also, I brought my flask, and uh, that helps. That helps with yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, I had a great time. I thought it was a great movie. I don't understand what Aquafina is. I don't either. <laughs> I mean, truth, truth be told, I feel like she's a reincarnated old white person in the body <laughs> of a young Chinese person. Is she yeah. Chinese? Asian? I don't know. Yeah, okay. I, don't know. Anyway. I mean, truth be told, I mean. There are people that are going to like this. Yeah. I mean, the guy and, that, that walked out of the theater with us last night. Oh, yeah. He asked us, do you guys like it? <laughs> and, and we nope. said, nope. <laughs> and he goes, oh, I thought it was great. It was, it was really oh, fun. And we're like, guys? we're like, okay. Yeah, there, was, yeah. there ended up being three other people that came in way late after we got there. So, And then we pointed to our shirts and said, we know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, we're, oh, we're professionals. Fuck you. We're professionals. <laughs> we're professionals. Are these yesterday's outfits? <laughs> yeah, we slept in them. No. <laughs> That's why I'm wearing my Together hoodie. Together on no. a boat in the middle we, of the ocean. We did hold hands while we were watching the movie. It was kind of Why fun. are you telling people this? I don't because I drunk. You better It's nobody's this out. business, but I'm here for I'm it. I'm looking at you, Kadish. <laughs> Speaking of, what's your rating? You for guys have been two? holding hands under the table all day. <laughs> <laughs> been playing footsie. <laughs> uh yeah, so Nicolas Cage made this movie. I'm I'm a big fan of Nicholas Holt as well, but oh, same. I, I felt like anyone could have played that role uh, and like he didn't really bring anything to it. But like, you know, he's fantastic in The Great, which is a Hulu original mm -hmm. series about Catherine, Catherine the Great. Uh, really stand out in that. I don't get Aquafina either. Like, I don't understand her popularity. I don't <laughs> think she's particularly funny. She's not a good actress. Um, so like, I don't know why what her popularity is based on. Yeah. I know that she was involved in like some type of like big show, but... Other than that, like I don't understand her appeal. Is it like a young person thing? I honestly don't be. know. Yeah, um, if you're so, over thirty, you don't get it. Like the yes. only thing I know her from is is uh, Chung Lee or, or uh, not Chung Lee, um, the Marvel movie uh, with the oh the Ten oh, Rings. Oh, Shang Chi. Shang Chi. Yeah, Shang Chi. Yeah, Shang Chi. Yeah, Shang so like the only thing I know her from is is that movie. She's in uh, the Jumanji Jumanji remake. Too. I mean, she she's been in quite a few movies. She also has her own show on I think Comedy Central. Yeah, believe, but so. but she, you know, again, she didn't really bring anything to this movie. She wasn't particularly funny. Mm -hmm. uh, the only only person who actually brought something to the table in this film was Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Yeah. And every time he was on screen, he was amazing. Like like the his portrayal as Dracula is probably one of the best that I've ever seen. And for that alone, like I was entertained. And and the, the over the top gore and kind of like the humor, uh, I thought was really good. But fell apart was like the the weird tonal shifts because this movie didn't know what it wanted to be mm -hmm. like if it was a straight up comedy like that would have been one thing mm -hmm. but like it oscillated between comedy and drama and romance and like weird stuff well there's way too many heartfelt moments well, between her and her sister and, I'm and, like, what am i watching right now and, here, and here's the here's the thing with me though um mm -hmm. the title of the movie 
is Renfield. That's not his movie. How much have we actually talked about Renfield in the last 45 minutes? It's not his movie. It's Aquafina's movie. It's not his movie. Yeah. She's the main so, character. If you break down the storylines, she's the only one that has like a true arc. Yeah. You know? Like so, uh, Renfield Renfield eventually stands up to Dracula. So he like his arc is there, but it was like a it, it was it's like he's all eh. I'm strong enough. I'm good enough. Uh, oh, he, gosh darn it. Somebody likes me. Oh, so yeah, yeah, that's that's what but, he was. But I, I will say that mm-hmm. I had fun in the theater while I was watching it. So I'm gonna give this like solid like three Aquafina buttholes. Wow. Out of five, yeah. Wow. Good for you, babe. Okay. Aquafina buttholes. That's a weird rating. It is a weird rating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give it two and a half Draculas because I'm normal. You give them a butthole. <laughs> Dracula butthole. Listen, even even <laughs> even. Stars are stars aren't good for this movie. They need to be buttholes. Buttholes. Yeah. Yeah. All we're right. gonna pooty shoes it. Star, <laughs> stars. <laughs> pooty shoes. The chocolate starfish rating. All right. That's it for our discussion about Nick Cage. Uh, <laughs> is he also your favorite actor? Because he's one of ours. Uh, yeah. He yeah. elevates every movie he's in, as far as I'm concerned. Even the crappy ones. I should have worn my. What do you want to see him in? I would love to see more Dracula. I, I think genuinely he did a great job as that, but I I don't know he's just kind of like I, I want to see a sequel to Willy's Wonderland and I want to see a <laughs> sequel to The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. Who would you like him to pair up with in his next project? Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> <laughs> That's your answer to everything. Oh, oh shit. what he's if he's gonna be like? He's like I need I need to jerk off to Nicolas Cage, and if I if it's in a Jennifer Aniston movie that gives me a reason to. I'd like to see. I would totally do that. That would be okay. I'd like to see him in um, Murder Mystery Three with Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston. Oh, Jennifer oh, Aniston. oh what's the what's the Adam that, Sandler movie he makes? Oh shit, that would be great. <laughs> right? Yeah, you come out and say he's going to be in the Nick next Cage Murder is Mystery. The, is the mystery. I will yeah. buy a ticket right oh, now. One hundred percent. I don't know. Murder Mystery. I don't know. So I don't think anybody knows what we want to see Nick Cage in until he actually shows us. What That's he's the thing. He, what he if picks his own battles? It would what be if weird and quirky? He was in a movie with Jean Claude Jean Claude no. Van Damme. Mm, maybe I'm kind of over Jean Claude. All right, let's wrap what? this up. I'm getting old. Let's wrap it up. Oh, Steven Seagal. We got to do a Matt, live stream. Matt V. Yeah. Say goodbye to the see, people. See you later, everybody. Have a good one. Great job. Bye bye. <laughs> Shoot. Say goodbye. I would like a, a sequel to Face Off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm with hey, you on that. I'm they're both in their that. resurgence, I guess, maybe. I don't know. What's John Travolta doing lately? Oh, he's doing like a whole bald thing now? Yeah, because he lost his hair? Yeah. Oh, good for him. What? what? Matthew Cater, say goodbye to the people. Goodbye, people. I hope uh, you do check out Renfield because it yeah. bombed hard. It, it did bomb. Oh, but it's so fun. Yeah, yeah but we gotta, Bring a flask. We got to support Nicolas Cage any way we can. Yeah. Wait, wait till a streamer. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment below what your favorite Nicolas Cage movie is. We'll see you next week. Stay salty. Hey, guys, if you like this podcast, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and comment below on your favorite video as well. That goes a long way with helping us boost our channel and get out there in front of more people. And it lets uh, YouTube know that we're doing something right. And if you want to catch us live, we go live two times a week, once on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific time and on Tuesdays at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time. So join us there in the chat. We will see you on the live stream. Stay salty.